Skyrim is packed with memorable characters, but some are just downright ridiculous. In this video, we're diving deep into the quirky corners of Skyrim to uncover seven of the most absurd personalities you can bump into. So grab your Wabberjack, don your Jester's hat, and let's begin. Number 7. Devenin Devenin is a Bosmer who you'll find wandering the streets of solitude. He's a half-mad beggar who often mumbles to himself, clearly in a state of distress. Wait, hear my plea! My master, he is lost between worlds, and I cannot bring him back! Why does everyone ignore me? Why do you turn your heads? Why will no one help me? Yeah, it's a pretty sad sight to see. He's convinced his master has abandoned him and is trapped in the forbidden wing of the Blue Palace. And to make things even weirder, he insists you need a random hip bone to enter this mysterious place. So with an undroppable hip bone in your inventory, naturally you venture into Pelagius' wing, where the truth is finally revealed. Devenin's master is none other than the Daedric Prince of Madness himself, Shia Gorath. What follows is a wild journey through Pelagius' mind, filled with puzzles, illusions, and plenty of dark humor. But the ending is both heartwarming and hilarious. Let's make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Clothes? Check. Beard? Check. Luggage? Luggage? Now where did I leave my luggage? Master, you've taken me back. Does this mean we're going home? Oh, happy times. I can't wait to... Yes, yes, that's quite enough celebration. Let's send you ahead, shall we? So Devenin may have found his master, but he's still got a whole lot of baggage to deal with. Number 6. Hamlin on the surface, Hamlin seems like your average Skyrim resident, but trust me, there's more to him than meets the eye. You'll find this peculiar fellow residing in the tunnels beneath Honing Brew Meadry, a rather unusual living situation. And you might think living under a Meadry means Hamlin's just a huge fan of the local brew, but that would be a lot better than the reality. See, Hamlin didn't choose the Meadry basement for its cozy atmosphere or proximity to unlimited mead. Nope, his journey reveals a troubled past filled with ridicule and rejection. He was once imprisoned in Whiterun for 10 long years, branded a madman and an outcast. Even after escaping and trying to make a new life in Winterhold, Hamlin couldn't find his place. The College of Winterhold saw him as irresponsible and dangerous, casting him out into the streets. With nowhere else to turn, Hamlin retreated from society entirely, seeking refuge in the Honingbrew basement. But it's not just a hideout, it's become his twisted laboratory. And during the Thieves Guild quest, Dampened Spirits, that's where you'll discover the true extent of his madness. Hamlin's been breeding an army of skeevers, feeding them the very ingredients used to make Honingbrew mead. The owner, Sabjorn, has no idea he's down there, only that his basement is infested with skeevers who somehow keep stealing his ingredients. It's a bizarre sight to say the least, a testament to Hamlin's warped genius and his desire for revenge against a world that shunned him. Number 5. Cicero You'll likely first bump into Cicero on the road north of Whiterun, and it's immediately clear this guy is different. Not only is he sporting a full jester getup, but he's also holding a coffin on his broken down cart. He claims it's his mother's, but something about this situation just feels off. Talking to him reveals his theatrical and slightly disturbing personality. His ramblings and over-the-top reactions are kind of funny at first, but there's a certain dark undercurrent to his behavior, especially when it comes to that coffin. You'll have to decide whether to help him by persuading a local farmer to repair his cart or rat him out to the guards, a choice with serious consequences. Yeah, as you progress through a certain twisted questline, the truth unfolds. The coffin holds the Night Mother, the spiritual leader of the Dark Brotherhood. And Cicero? He's not just a jester. He's the Night Mother's keeper, desperately seeking a new sanctuary for her. 
his journals reveal a tragic backstory. The loss of his community, the silence of the Night Mother, and the haunting laughter of his final target, a jester whose outfit he now wears. Driven by a desperate need for acceptance, Sisu arrives at the Falkreath Sanctuary, only to be met with more silence from the Night Mother. This isolation drives him further into madness, and his devotion to the Brotherhood's old ways clashes with Astrid's leadership, creating tension within the Sanctuary. You'll eventually have to decide Cicero's fate, but spare him and he'll offer to join you on your adventures. So if you ever find yourself face to face with a jester carrying a coffin, just remember, it's probably not a good time to clown around. Number 4. Arendelle now, Arendelle wasn't content with simply enjoying the finer things in life. Oh, hell no. He has a penchant for the macabre, indulging in disturbing fantasies and conducting twisted experiments on corpses. Yep, it's going exactly where you think it's going. The guy even fantasized about secret encounters with the local girls of Dawnstar. As you can imagine, this obsession with the dead didn't exactly sit well with his neighbours, so he was swiftly exiled from the city. But did banishment stop Arendelle? Nope, he simply relocated to the nearby Nord burial ground, Ingville. It was the perfect place for a necromancer to continue his twisted experiments undisturbed. Why? Well, the place is filled with female Draugr, so Arendelle's twisted fantasy became a reality. I don't really even want to go on with this story. He reanimated these female Draugr, creating an entourage of undead women to cater to his every whim. Some were assigned to guard the island, while others, well, let's just say their duties were far less savoury. His obsession took a sinister turn when his undead guards captured a local maid from Dawnstar. Fearful of being exposed, Arundel killed her and added her to his collection of undead slaves. But this experiment yielded unexpected results. The maid spirit became incorporeal. Arundel's journal describes his touch passing right through her as a sensation unlike any other, as if her essence were invigorating my very soul, connecting with me on a level no woman of flesh and blood could do. Give me a sec. With this discovery, Arundel sent his undead servants out to capture more people to experiment on, hoping for more of these invigorating experiences. So the man is well and truly disturbed. His story serves as a chilling reminder that some desires are best left buried. Number 3. Calixto Unlike some of the other characters on this list, Calixto initially seems perfectly normal. He's an imperial curator in Windhelm, running a quaint little museum called Calixto's House of Curiosities. He greets you with a warm smile and even offers a guided tour for a small fee. But as you step inside, the curiosities on display start to raise some eyebrows. Ancient Nord embalming tools? Isgrimor's soup spoon? A casual collection of skulls? It's all a bit unsettling to say the least, and it makes you wonder about the man behind these strange treasures. When you ask Calixto about his collection, he spins a tale of travelling across Tamriel with his sister, collecting these artefacts along the way. And after his sister's death, he opened this museum in her memory. So he paints himself as a harmless old man, just sharing his passion with the world. But that all changes during the infamous Blood on the Ice quest. A serial killer is on the loose, and Calixto seems eager to help, even willing to buy a strange amulet you find during your investigation. He calls it the Wheelstone and dismisses it as a mere ceremonial item. However, this is far from the truth. For you see, this seemingly harmless curator is the killer himself, known as the Butcher. He's been using the abandoned Hiram mansion as his gruesome lair. And that strange amulet, it's actually the necromancer's amulet, hinting at his dark magical pursuits. The quest eventually leads to a tense confrontation where you must stop Calixto from claiming another victim. And once he's defeated, a key from his corpse unlocks a hidden chest in his museum. Inside, his journal reveals his twisted plan to resurrect his sister, using the body parts of the woman he's murdered. 
is just sickening, and Calixto's ability to maintain a facade of normalcy while committing such heinous acts is truly chilling. Number 2. Sam Quaven You'll encounter this seemingly harmless Breton in a tavern after reaching level 14. He's got a friendly demeanor and a challenge for you, a drinking contest with a magical staff as the prize. It all just sounds like a bit of fun, right? Well, think again. See, Sam's special ale packs a punch, and just after three drinks, it's lights out. You wake up in the Temple of Debella with the mother of all hangovers, only to find out you stole a goat, sold it to a giant, and then got married. And your blushing bride, none other than Moira the Hagraven. Quite a beautiful specimen indeed. Yeah, it turns out this whole fiasco was orchestrated by your drinking buddy, Sam. After fighting your way through the wedding venue, also known as Morvanska, you're transported to Misty Grove. And here, amidst a wild party, you finally confront the real mastermind behind your misery, Sanguine, the Daedric Prince of debauchery and revelry. So it just goes to show that even a hangover in Skyrim can have a rosy outcome. Number 1. Shia Gorath We've met some truly eccentric personalities, but saving the most ridiculous for last, it's the Daedric Prince of Madness himself. As we know from his luggage, De Venin, you'll find Shia Gorath chilling in the mind of the completely insane Emperor Pelagius III. And if that doesn't scream madman already, then I don't know what does. But here's where things get really interesting. The Shia Gorath we see in Skyrim isn't actually the original. He's the player character from the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. In the events of the Shivering Isles questline, the hero of Kavach ends up becoming Shia Gorath after freeing Jigalag, the Daedric Prince of Order and Logic. So when you speak to Shia Gorath in Skyrim, you're essentially talking to yourself from Oblivion, which is just really cool. But why is Shia Gorath mad? Well, legend has it that the other Daedric princes feared Jigalag's power, so they cursed him to become his opposite, the embodiment of madness. This constant battle between order and chaos is the heart of Shia Gorath's character, and it makes for a seriously entertaining quest. During the Mind of Madness, Shia Gorath ironically wants you to cure aspects of Pelagius' madness, and the tool he gives you, the Wabajack. A staff so unpredictable, it could turn your enemy into a sweet roll, summon a chicken, or straight up kill them. It's the perfect reflection of Shia Gorath's chaotic nature. So the next time you encounter Shia Gorath, just remember, he's not mad, he's just kvatching up on his vacation. And there you have it, wizards, seven of the most ridiculous characters you can encounter on your Skyrim adventures. If you can think of any other absurd personalities I missed out on, be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future Skyrim adventures. Thanks for watching, wizards, for this has been the Welsh Wizard, and I shall see you all in the next one.